I was thinking about building something because <laughs> I do enjoy building but uh, we also need to make some headway in terms of painting as well so we should probably paint but I'm leaving my options open still let's get out all of these pieces and then we can kind of assess where we're at maybe we'll take a little break guys we'll take a little break and then we'll uh, get to uh, painting possibly so yeah here's all the all the little bitties for the for the machining Krieger model that's the the pilot and here's the uh, the actual uh, what's it called the ammo knight itself I have it disassembled but we can partially assemble it now just to give you guys an idea of where we're at with it um, I think we'll paint the interior the exterior is mostly done as you can see at least kind of like the original sort of base texture if you want to call it that like kind of painting and texturizing it of course there's the decals to still place and a lot of rust effects and all of that stuff even more rust believe it or not <laughs> this thing is already very rusty and crusty but we need to add more more kind of shading and detail to it but yeah this is the uh this is the mark 44 ammo knight and once again these are the textures that i had built up uh using what do they call it the cast iron technique cast it's cast steel technique using using cement plastic cement to dab the surface of the plastic and create that like textured look which is then further enhanced by by brush painting and all of that so yeah this is this is we're at a good state now where we kind of have like like just about everywhere on the model covered but it, not the interior so how about we focus on the interior and of course there's a lot of uh, extra detail stuff like this uh, like this barrel that needs some attention and a lot of uh, extra little plates of armor all of that need all of that need paint all of that need love and attention the gun as well there is a gun which i have somewhere <laughs> i'll have to find the gun but let's take a break guys let's take a break and uh, when we get back we'll get to possibly maybe uh okay let's paint this barrel just trying to think of what what i want to actually work on the world of video games has taught me that barrels are red because that's the weak point and the barrel does go right here on the back I wonder if that's just a little too distracting, TBH, you know? Maybe that's just a little too... kind of draws too much attention to itself. So maybe we'll just kind of work on it and paint it like this gray color at first, and then we'll decide later. So let's do that. And also let's put a little more water on our wet palette. Uh, bacon, yeah, yeah, this, this kit, I started it like... Uh, maybe in the fall? But I haven't really worked on it since, and you know, I'm trying to kind of work on things, um, older things that I haven't finished yet. Do you know what I mean? Uh, before moving on to new stuff, like like the Nightingale. Like I know I wanted to work on the Nightingale. We were talking about that too, but yeah. Like I've got so many other kits that I'm really excited to work on and build, but I really should finish the ones that are currently on my plate. Do you know what I mean? And this is one of them, so let's do it. Like, it's one of those things where I feel like you could take as little or as long as you would like on it. Like, I don't know... Ooh, you know what? Let's put away this brush. I don't know how long it's going to take to actually fully complete this one. No, let's just... Let's just uh, put this brush right here, so I can't find the small cap for it. We'll get that small cap later. Now, ooh, oh this is a dry brush paint, holy shit. Um, a lot of this model I had painted with a sponge, but um, how about for this barrel, we, we will not use a sponge and we'll just kind of use a normal brush. 
How about we just do that? And see what that kind of ends up looking like. Also, let's change the music. Thank you, Street Fighter. What do we got? What do we like? Got some Switch music, some Switch remixes, <laughs> or we we shop. All right, let's begin. Uh, let's keep all the parts that need paint away from this general area, because little flecks of paint might just hop on. That's not good. And yeah, I'm kind of doing this kind of like uneven, spotchy, splotchy technique. And I think that that's kind of a useful method to make things look a little more organic, look, make things look a little more worn. Um, Rather than just kind of painting it and like getting an even coat, we just kind of rely on the on the water the water content in the mix to create a bit of like an uneven look and you sort of build it up to a point where it does get solid. But yeah, we're kind of just relying on that for now. And <laughs> I don't have I don't have this thing on a, on clippers or anything, so I have to be aware of of how I'm going to handle this thing. So yeah, that's that's kind of good just right now, and we'll, maybe we'll just let this dry, and then we'll kind of work on the next part. So there's a lot of interior detail as we can see, and then there's a gun. There's a secondary there's a second pilot model as well. Uh, where's the gun? The gun I'm thinking about, um, kind of dry brushing, like, a silver? Let me find that gun. Ooh, where's the gun at? Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh, here it is. Here's the gun. Um, yeah. I think I want to dry brush some silver on it, but that would mean getting out some more paint, uh, water rather, to do that. Silver or white, I'm not really sure what'll stand out. Let me close my window because it's like howling outside. <clears throat> A little cold outside. So here's the pilot seat, and we have the back, the back here, which I think is going to be a lot of like copper and silver. Cold is super nice in my area. Yeah, it's. Uh, do I want to say cold? It's um, it's windy. Yeah, it's windy. It's not too sunny right now. Yeah, maybe cold isn't the right word, but it is kind of windy. <sighs> yeah, you're lucky you didn't get hit by that uh, ice storm. Uh, even in, like, Ottawa, Ottawa region, and even in Quebec, uh, there was a lot of power outages that lasted throughout even the next day. So that was kind of shitty. We got power back the same day, just kind of late, like 11 or something, but yeah, not good. All right, so what do we want to color the inside, the interior? See this chair here? A lot of the detail behind just 
is obscured by the chair. So, I mean, it's kind of up to you if you want to paint it. I, I'll probably paint it, to be honest. Because I'm, I'm weird like that. <laughs> I had this idea in mind that the interior of the of this thing would be kind of like very clean in contrast to the exterior which is very rough so I'm, I'm still of the mindset that I want to do that but I think we need to paint anything that's going to be silver first anything that's going to be metallic we need to paint so so that's probably the objective for the rest of today is to do some metallic work uh, yeah Sony was definitely one of those like holdouts that were kind of like very kind of iffy on on enabling that but I'm glad that Sony kind of got on board with it so I'm painting the gold here this I don't know what you want to call it it's like a radiator like an engine kind of thing we're painting this gold and then the bands will paint silver and I think that'll look pretty good and I'm not too worried about overpainting into the silver parts at this point because we can we can always just uh, uh, clean that up with the silver when it comes time to paint the silver. And I'm trying to find and trying to think about the other parts that are going to be silver on this model. Yeah, because you know the the actual flow of the storyline of Diablo three is very awkward. Like it's. It just it's not very compelling. It doesn't make you want to like keep playing and it just it just feels very I don't know what you want to call it like <clears throat> it's very herky. Some water. <clears throat> it's very herky jerky and it's I don't know how to explain it really. It just doesn't make you want to keep going and playing, but it's the complete opposite when it comes to playing the seasons and the adventure mode. That's the key thing, is the adventure mode and then the Nephilim Rifts. That's where you're gonna get, that's where you're gonna get that great like kind of gameplay flow. And and like I said, it almost feels like an arcade game. Like you just, you just go and you try and get, try and do it fast, get like, make your build as good as possible and then clear the Rifts as fast as you can get them rewards it's pretty good it's pretty entertaining not gonna lie anyone play Diablo Immortal <laughs> that kind of came and went I think I actually tried it very very briefly and I think Night Trap played it for like one night or something but it wasn't very good that wasn't actually made by a uh, Blizzard. I was made by like some other company that make MMO games. No. <laughs> yeah, I think it I think it I have no idea if people are still playing it. I wouldn't be surprised if if it gets shut down at some point. Didn't seem like it was very popular TBH. Didn't seem like it was really getting much love, getting much attention. And if it sucks, it sucks, you know, like people are going to vote with their wallets, vote with their time, vote with their money. And it just didn't seem like anything worth your time. So there's some silver parts here. We will get those. Uh, yeah, so this is what we've done so far. And it does look a little patchy. We'll get another layer of paint on there. But we're going to work on the silver parts now. And like I said, I had this idea in mind that it would be quite shiny, very clean on the inside. So we'll use this shining silver rather than something like a lead belcher, which is a more darker color, which I might use for the gun, as a matter of fact. I might use that for the gun. I saw that Vallejo paint is reformulating, not reformulating, but they have new bottles coming out. I think it was Vallejo. They're making new bottles for their paint, which will be nicer to, with nicer caps. I think that was something that I saw. Uh, was Vallejo, possibly? All right, 
Let's get this silver down. Very shiny. And I'm thinking about painting the coils maybe brass. And because I painted the uh, the base color underneath, like, you know, it's this gray, this dark gray. Um, that's very useful because we can kind of rely on the dark and the shadows to, to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. Nothing from uh, Trinity Bacon. <clears throat> Not even tools, because that's something that I was thinking about. Not necessarily models, but tools. But yeah, you're probably in a, in a, it's probably for the best that nothing, nothing catches your eye. Still trying to minimize the amount of stuff you, you buy presently before your big trip. What's up, Siang? How's it going? How are you today? Been doing some painting today, doing some uh, painting of random things. What are you doing today? What are you up to? What are you thinking about buying Siang? Siang is always a uh, He's always got something. He's got his finger on the on the buy button on something cool. <laughs> and again, I'm 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 just constantly looking and checking here in terms of what I'm actually gonna what am I actually going to color I haven't decided not much money left ah okay okay so we're holding off the uh, the luggage the accessory so I showed Jotain accessory kit was the was the purchase this time around. Those are very nice. It's very nice. I do like that. I kind of want one too now, to be honest. Ah, smaller kits. Well, that's still a kit. I mean, what what are you thinking about buying in terms of smaller kits? Small kits, big kits, all good. Oh, that's right. Uh, Siang just got a PS5. Yes, yes, yes. Very cool. I guess I'll just paint this whole thing. I was like, how am I going to do this? I'll just paint the whole thing silver. MS Ride Dome option part. Ah. Yeah, I do like the option parts. There's some really nice stuff out there. And as a matter of fact, getting some of those option parts might be something I look into for the Nightingale. Possibly, possibly. Trinity also sells uh, some interesting 3D printed parts. Like, like I don't know, they have a supplier that makes 3D printed parts. You can get like different kinds of hands and, and other cool little extras. Metal, metal boosters and stuff. So, I mean, that could be an option too. That could be an option too. I think we gotta paint this. Let's get this. 
got to do some silver on the on the bands here but actually before we do that let's make sure that the gold is nice if the gold is kind of all where we want it to be <laughs> to be honest though it's this this all gets covered up amusingly enough so it's not like we have to do like an amazing amazing job but let's get a second coat of the gold here just to make sure we get a, a good coverage on that actually do some shading on the gold too. I want to make sure that the gold is kind of nice, is kind of thinned out nicely. It's not a good idea to thin out metallics too much to be honest. It's one of those things where you kind of have to get a good feel for it. If you're hand painting that is. Um, there's a new hobby shop near my workplace where they focused on Aoshima vehicles. Oh, interesting. Aoshima. So I might try and get uh, Initial D. Nice. Initial D. You know what? As much as I enjoyed Initial D, I have zero Initial D model kits. See? I get my inspiration from shoes and fighting game characters. And Bacon gets his color inspiration from VTubers. Inspiration can come from everywhere. I did start a little late today, unfortunately. But I'll try and be back soonish <laughs> so I can do more, so I can paint more. And I was also thinking about playing Stardew Valley a second time during the week just because I feel like I, I can't really get as much accomplished as I'd like just doing one online session a week. So we might be adding another session of Stardew, but I'm kind of trying to figure out what day that would be. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Some of these parts I feel like are intended to be more like uh, intended to to be like a joint. So I really shouldn't put too much paint on it. Just do a little bit for the sake of of tossing some paint on it. A dark purple candy coat. Um, bum, bum. In fact, going to do some testing tonight on spoons. Noise. Bacon in the lab. Siang, I also need to buy s some chair from my Sosai Shoujo. Can't keep using Danmore's head. <laughs> but it's actually really cute, uh, the way you set that up. I do like that. Um, Yeah, I have the retro desk set. And I'm pretty happy with that chair. It's kind of just like a nice desk chair situation. <laughs> yeah, Dan Board. Dan Board doesn't mind. I'm pretty sure Dan Board is totally cool with that. Okay. Very shiny. Very shiny indeed. We should probably let this dry. But let's actually get some silver now, because that's the other kind of main color that I wanted to get on this uh, this engine thing. Get some silver. And the reason why I'm just putting it on this little plastic tra tray rather than my wet palette is that it kind of, um, I'm able to kind of control the thickness of the paint a little better this way boom, boom, boom. 
Seeing I was looking at the Hasegawa park bench and skateboard set, Christ, price is not the best. Yeah, that's the thing about a lot of these accessories. I, I'm constantly like double thinking like, this, I don't know if I want to shell out the dough. It's just an accessory. I usually end up pretty happy with buying it anyways. Ah, you know what? Before we move on to the silver, I started to paint the silver, but I suddenly realized that I should probably add a bit of shadow to the uh, silver biddies. So let's do that. And again, we have something for that. We've got this acrylic ink. Let's use that. I have um, I have a Reichland Flesh Shade from Citadel, which would probably do a pretty good job as well. But I think we'll try this. Uh, <clears throat> we'll try this. I have, I have a good feeling about this. And we can actually just kind of put some on the corner of this here. Unless I have a bottle cap. <laughs> here, let's use this bottle cap. Yeah, my uh, my Ritsuka is in a sitting position. She's not standing up. I'm, I kind of just have her sitting at the, at the desk. I kind of like that pose. We got a number of... Uh, of accessories coming out in the future for Sosai Shoujo Tain as well, so I'm looking forward to the other accessories. Okay, let's add some of this Reichlin Flesh Shade, and yeah, that's pretty nice. We're adding, it just gives it a bit more depth. I have another kind of metallic paint, gold paint, which I've used a couple of times, but I decided not to use it for this. Uh, cause, just because I felt like I'd be able to control this a bit more. And it's a little more like I can kind of like work on the fly and make quicker, easier decisions with this product. I think the karaoke and mixing set is still a long way. Oh, is it still a long way? Oh, I thought it was like soon, soon. Like maybe like th in the summer. And we can get some of this uh, this ink on the the brass parts as well. Really gives it a bit more like depth, which I really like. There's some amazing, amazing paint jobs um, for Machine and Krieger. And, and even when it comes to the interior details like this, like I've, some, I've seen some people do amazing work to the point where it's like, wow, this is amazing. And it gets all covered up, <laughs> but um, it's not a bad thing really. It's just a matter of like, for me at this point right now, I, I didn't have a very clear vision in terms of like the overall product of how this is going to look when it's done. So I'm just kind of going by what I feel and what it, what kind of makes sense for what I want to do. Um, but I think we can make adjustments as we go along as well. I think it's okay to kind of change change course as we're going along, and and uh, you know, if if another better idea comes along, we can we can kind of shift things. The other thing I'm doing right now is pushing the the ink wash into the shaded areas or the parts that I want to be a little more shaded. Not that far actually, July 2023, yeah, yeah, that's not too bad, not too bad. That's kind of more along, that's kind of what I was thinking, more or less. The beach set is June, the beach set. Man, am I gonna get a beach model? That's the question. Am I going to get a Sosai Sojo Tain beach model? Am I, am I? Because Bacon has one now. <laughs> am I going to get one too? Possibly. You know what? All right, let's put some of this. It's matte. Yes, you will, Bacon. <laughs> All 
I'm kind of waiting for the new characters to come out, to be honest. The ones that they, they actually haven't even shown a model for yet. They've only just kind of teased them. Looking forward to those. I'm mixing up a darker... A darker kind of ink wash that's a mix. And the ink is still drying here. Carmi, I want a tan. Your actual self, you want a tan? Get yourself a tan, Carmi. Hit up the, hit up the uh, the old tanning uh, tanning salon. Is that what they're called? Get yourself a t get a spray tan. <laughs> I remember um, friend of mine. <sighs> Someone was living in his house. Like it wasn't like a relation. I don't know if it was like a roommate or something, but they had. This this particular person was obsessed with spray tan. Spray tan? And like the washroom was a horror show. <laughs> because it was like like the faucet, the door handle, the the toilet plunger, like like everywhere in his washroom was like orange brown shit like orange brown goop do you know what i mean like like from the spray tan i was like jesus i know this is just a spray tan but seeing all sorts of orangey brown shit all over like a washroom is kind of freaking scary <laughs> Actually, Bacon, you know this person. It's a, it's, it's a, <laughs> it's um, it's a Buck. Buck, uh, when we used to hang out at Buck's place, I don't know if you recall, but there was a certain period of time where there was, the washroom just had orange shit all over it. Um, probably winter fastest. Ah, the winter for the new ones. Okay. Because we already have one release for each season. Spring, we got Ritsuka Winter Uniform. Koyomi. Yeah, I kind of wish they were a bit faster on the schedule for that. But, you know, it's... That's just one line that Kotobuki Edit has. And they have multiple lines of figures and, and stuff. So I, I get it. I get it. Now, I can make, like, a quick decision. Do I want to... Do I want to use this paint? Do I want to change it up? And I don't have to worry about about shaking it manually for like, you know, five minutes or whatever, right? Use two balls and a rod. <laughs> two balls and a rod. <laughs> that's the that's the Chad strat, you know. All my paint has two balls and a rod. Maximum mixing. <laughs> is perfectly mixed every time alpha that's the alpha male mindset Yeah, so it's looking good right now, but of course we still need to kind of um, get get a more even coat everywhere. And it's just a matter of just taking our time. This is quite a lot of effort for something that's going to be obscured, but eh, you know, it's part of the fun. It's part of the fun, guys. Just like painting that ball when we were working on the ball, uh, continuing our conversation about balls, but the big, you know, Master Grade Verka ball, you know, I spent a good amount of time, I think a lot of us did, painting the interior, and it just gets all covered up. Just how it be.
getting there, getting there. I'm not too worried about the uh, the patchiness at this point because I am applying it quite thin. And we will be doing another layer. This might not be the ideal brush for this. I just kind of picked it up. Okay. Yeah, we'll probably need to do a second layer. I think that there's some silver parts up here. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, some of these uh some of these details I'm going to be painting with like normal flat paint, not metallics. It's a mix. Gonna get in the mix. And this in itself then gets obscured by the chair. <laughs> Where's the chair? Should I even bother? <laughs> Should I even bother with some of this stuff? Look, it gets covered up completely by the chair. And the chair itself gets put completely covered up, mostly by the pilot. And then the pilot itself, you don't really see any of that because then this goes on top, right? You cover up with this. So that's a lot of effort to paint stuff that you might not even see. But you know what, guys? That's part of the fun. It's part of the hobby, and I'm not in a rush. And it gives us options for displaying it if I want to display it kind of like partially open, which I am thinking about, um, you know, kind of like displaying it in a partially open state. If I can, uh, if I can finish up scribing my Sazabi, my SD Sazabi this week, that would be good. And by the end of the week, if I could p spray paint it so that next week we can start painting it, I think I'll be pretty happy with that. For, go for some of you that haven't been here at the start, I can actually show you. This is what we've done thus far uh, for scribing my... SD Sazabi. So not only have I been practicing scribing, but I've also uh, applied some some plot plates to it, and that's just the back here. And I've just started to scribe the fr um, the side skirts as well. I I did this on on stream, and it took it took a decent amount of time just to do this much. And we have to do that, and then mirror and do the other side there and then add any more plot plates. But I'm pretty happy with how this looks so far. I think that once we spray it all like uniform black or or gray, we'll kind of have a better idea of of, uh, of how it'll look as a uniform piece. But I'm feeling pretty good about, about that. I was a little skeptical about my process, <laughs> about like everything about it. Um, right off at the start, I was like, ooh, is this gonna look good? I don't know. Scribing, I'm not used to scribing, but um, the more I do it, the better I feel about it, and the more of kind of comfortable I'm getting with it. And it, this is all within the same model, so it's just one of those things where kind of like the thought of doing it is more intimidating than actually doing it. Once you start doing it, you know, even within, like I said, this, just the same model itself, kind of, kind of building up that confidence. Um, but it is intimidating because you're like scratching your model. You're effectively digging and digging a gash into your model and potentially a very expensive model too. Like, you know, I was, all of this I'm doing because I thought maybe I would do my, I would scribe my Nightingale. And it's like the thought of scribing the Nightingale, that's a fairly pricey model. I was like, ooh, I don't know. And I still don't know, to be honest. I don't know if I actually want to go through with it. But... It doesn't seem as intimidating as a thought. Uh, 
at the start. You too can do it. You too. My brother Night Trap, uh, when we when we all kind of got back into the hobby around the same time, he bought a build fighter model and was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna scribe it." I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> we just got. We're all just kind of getting back into the hobby. We uh, kind of getting our dipping our toes into the process. Bacon, yeah, he's just straight into scribing. He's like, yep, I'm back in the hobby. I'm going to scribe now. <laughs> I was like, damn, all right. And it looked good. Yeah. <laughs> the chat, what a giga chat. Uh, and plot plating too, as a matter of fact. I mean, an HD is a good kit to want to, to do that with too. Because, uh, you know, again, it's it's kind of like a low, low risk environment where you're like, okay, it's an HG. It's not incredibly large and, and uh, you know, it didn't break the bank doing it. And, you know, the same philosophy uh, applies to this SD that I'm working on as well. It's it's not a very pricey model, so it's it's kind of okay to work on and you know kind of mess around with. Like even when I did my first like scribing on the back of that S SD, uh, some of the lines kind of went past where I wanted it to go, and some of the lines kind of skipped off past the groove, and it was like oh shit, like that sucks. But just imagine if I had done that on a model that was actually like really expensive that I wanted to look like really really good and I made a mistake like that I would be like ooh oh fuck <laughs> and a lot of uh you know when you start thinking about master grade kits and 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 real grade kits a lot of them have a tremendous amount of detail already so, like on the surface, right? Especially a lot of the modern stuff. A lot of uh, Verka kits have a, a lot of kind of panels and details. So, so it's less of a, a thing once you kind of get into those higher, higher grades. It's less of a thing that you need to concern yourself with. But in, in high grade, it's definitely a thing that you can try. <clears throat> Okay, I think we might actually wrap things up, guys. Somehow we made it to 6 o'clock uh, Eastern Time. That's usually when I stop because I, I get hungry and I got I to gotta get something to eat. But this is what we've done thus far. Uh, there's a lot more to do for this. But it <laughs> this kind of reminds me of like a, a brewery or something. It kind of reminds me the brass and the silver. It reminds me of like Steam Whistle Brewery. Something that makes beer. I might have beer on the mind, guys. But I, I, I kind of like where we're going with this. We'll have to add some kind of black ink wash to the black parts as well. Create a shading. Looks cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. And all of this, we'll work on this. I might even do some after the stream to kind of just get this wrapped up and get at least some paint everywhere. But uh, this looks so cool. This is so cool. <laughs> this bacon's like catchphrase. Yeah, and then here's the barrel that we painted as well. And then we also have the rabbits, which are more or less done. We'll take a photo of the rabbits and I'll put them in the display case right by the uh, the Dungeons and Dragons, the Dungeons and Dragons wing of my uh, of my display case. <laughs> 